Hey, welcome back to the garage, everyone. I decided to change out the vacuum modulator valve on the uh, 722.3 transmission on our Mercedes 300SD. We'll give you a quick uh, look up inside the old port right there where the vacuum modulator goes. It looks pretty clean uh, to me, so I'm not going to be doing any work down in there. I might wipe out the exterior just a bit before I put the new one in. As you can see, you've got a, a bolt hole here and another one right over there. Those are the two bolts that hold the vacuum modulator to the transmission. What you have is a little metal shim. Uh, this piece slips through a, a little groove in the modulator valve like that. Let's see if I get it back on there correctly. There we go, it goes on there like that. And the modulator goes on the transmission thus, just like that. It is held on by a couple of screws, one of which is here, and another one is over. Aha, there's the other one right there. We have uh, two uh, hex bolts that hold this thing on. I think it's a number six. I'm, don't hold me to that, though. So, anyway, uh, this one had a, uh, a cracked neoprene cover, and you can see where I, I put some uh, silicone seal it on it to, to seal it up. Now, I will say this. This vacuum modulator does hold vacuum. At least it held vacuum on the car. So, let's see what the status is of this vacuum modulator. Let's do a little test on it real quick. I tested it on the car and it, it said it held vacuum. Let's plug our uh, vacuum hose in here to the Mighty Vac hand operated vacuum pump. So we'll see you, we'll let you see what we got here. Here's our situation. There's our vacuum pump and our hose and whatnot. And uh, here we go. Pumped it up to about 10. And you can see that is, mm, it's, it's coming down maybe, a, I don't know. It looks good to me. I mean, it's, it's pretty solid. But you know what you you know I just I just don't know I, I'm going to go ahead and change it anyway because my shift from third to fourth is is delayed and it's pretty harsh it's it's really harsh to be honest with you and the the shifts from one to from one to two to three are, are fine uh, but they're a little early so I've been adjusting the Bowden cable uh, I was like you know what I think I'm going to hit I'm going to go ahead and change out the uh, the modulator valve as well I've already got a new one here thank you Amazon and uh, it's got a new uh, metal uh, cap it's got a new plastic cap and the adjusting T in there uh, we're going to go ahead and put this on the car all right one thing to note is the uh, the little plunger that comes with the new modulator valve is is quite a bit different design as you can see, as compared to uh, the original one. Now, sometimes these are broken. These older ones are broken, but this in this car, it seems to be fine. I'm going to hold on to that. I'm not going to do anything with it. Uh, one more thing to note here. So I'm assuming this is the original uh, modulator valve for this car. This O-ring is, is basically done. It's, it's very flat. It was a little bit of a struggle to, to ease this out of there because it had been in there so long. Let's wipe that off a little bit. It's fresh out of the car. Take an up-close look at this guy. I don't see anything glaring. Of course, you know, you just you don't, you don't know what's going on inside that thing. And then the uh, the plunger here, it looks fine. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see what the uh, we'll see what the new one yields for us. Um, if this doesn't fix the problem, I maybe end up sticking that back in the car. But let's let's just find out what happens here. Okay, so I'm going to need two hands to do this job. So uh, really, all it entails is slipping this guy down in there and lining up this uh, metal flange with the two holes I showed you just a moment ago. Okay, not too terribly bad. It's just a tight spot up in there. You need two hands to do it. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, the modulator valve just won't, you know, slip up in there real easy. You know, there is an O-ring. The fit of the O-ring down into the, the port 
is, you know, it's pretty snug. So you've got to, once you get it in place, you've got to, you know, use a little force to, to, uh, to slip that O-ring down inside there. You know, don't get too aggressive with it. You'll also want to um, twist the, once you get it in place, you want to just move this around a little bit, the entire modulator valve. You want to get this port out of the way of this screw because if you, you know, if this, this thing is right here, you can't, you know, you can't screw the screw in. So that's just a good tip. All right. So we're going to uh, insert the, the adjustment T pin there. Just any arbitrary location will do. We haven't done it. We haven't done any adjusting to this yet. So that will come a little later. Pardon me. We we'll have to get our little cap on here. Let's see which way does this go? Uh, you got to line up this little nub on there with the one on the cap. I believe that is it right there. Yep. Got to get our vacuum line connected. Nice and snug. I checked the vacuum on this too. It's it's in uh, it's it's good to go. So, all right, one modulator valve installed on a Mercedes 722.3 transmission. Hey, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe. Take it easy.